Braving to Overcome Porn Use. I'm Dr. Trish Lee. Let me tell you what that acronym means and how you can use it to break the chains of porn if you are up for it. Okay, so that acronym comes from Brene Brown, who is a shame researcher. And you've probably heard of her because she's wildly popular, but she has created this acronym of BRAVING so that people can understand the components that are necessary to build trust in relationships, and especially when we're talking about repairing your relationship and getting out of the chains that are keeping you down in pornography. So let me tell you what each letter in the BRAVING acronym means and how you can use it to, first and foremost, gain the strength to overcome porn use and become vulnerable. Brene Brown is also a vulnerability researcher. Become vulnerable so that you can actually become invulnerable. And what I mean by that is when you hide your pornography use, it creates a shame cycle. So what happens is sometimes men in the first place feel shame, which is I don't feel good about myself and I don't feel worthy that I am bad. And sometimes that leads them to pornography use in the first place. But what it definitely does, and we know this based on science, it creates a shame cycle that when you consume pornography, it makes you feel bad that you've chosen that act again. And then you feel guilt and shame. And guilt is different. Guilt is I've done something bad. Shame is I am something bad. So if you really get sucked into a pornography habit, it creates I am bad because I have this habit and I can't break free. So we can use braving to break free and then especially to repair your relationship if you're married or if you have a a long-term relationship with a partner, th your porn use has entered into that relationship. I'm sorry to tell you, it's impacted it. Science shows us that. So then there tends to need to be some repair done there. Uh, and over the weekend, my son and his girlfriend had uh, a little situation that occurred between them and it involved some crying. But then I texted him and I know this might be a bit much, but he was kind of at a loss for like, what do I do? And you know me, I like to educate people. I'm like, it's called rupture and repair. That right now you have a rupture in your relationship. And if the rupture stands and you don't repair it, then there's going to be a wound in your relationship and you will get further apart. If you repair that rupture now, the the sooner the better, that, that relationship actually heals quickly and you can become stronger and your relationship can become better over time. You can use this situation with your pornography habit to do that. That's the making lemonade out of lemons. You can use it to become closer, to become vulnerable, share your thoughts and feelings with your partner, tell them about your struggle, tell them that you're in recovery and you have recovery efforts, have them support you so that you are no longer alone. You have people supporting you in your life course I'm here for you too. Okay so what braving means is first of all setting boundaries. You're going to need to set those boundaries with yourself first and foremost and we've talked about that in lots of videos where you're going to change your literal physical environment. That's a boundary. You're going to change your routines, your habits. You're going to change your thought processes. You're going to tap into your feelings. Those are all new boundaries. You're no longer going to go into your basement, into your man cave, into your chair, in front of your TV after you've had a cocktail and some weed. Boundaries. Then that's how you're going to come out of this porn habit. But then you're going to have to set boundaries with you and with your your spouse or your significant other where one boundary is going to be that you are no longer going to watch pornography. Another boundary is going to be that you're always going to be honest that if you have a slip or a relapse, you will be honest with your partner about what's going on so that you can work on it together. Boundaries are your friend. You need to learn how to set them and how to hold them for yourself and for each other in your relationship as you're repairing the trust 
that has been frayed and it's called betrayal trauma for your partner and we won't go into it here but it's real your partner is actually affected as are your children um, okay reliability are you reliable are you doing the things that you say you're going to do and that can be in your work and in your relationships and in your play or your hobbies so at work are you reliable do you deliver do you deliver better and faster than than you should you should do that because being reliable is what is going to build integrity and dignity and get you out of this shame cycle. Are you reliable to your spouse or your partner? Do you do the things you say you're going to do for him or her? Okay, accountability. You're going to need an accountability partner in this journey so that you can be accountable for the things that you say you are going to do. That shouldn't really be your partner, honestly. It should be a bestie or a best friend or join a group. There's accountability groups get somebody behind you who's holding you accountable to be able to keep the streak and to break the habit and to get on purpose and you check in with this person you tell them all the things that you're doing to move in the right direction and all the things that you're doing to stay away from the wrong direction next is called faulting faulting is really important and so when people ask me if my services are confidential I'm like the everything we talk about or anything you send me is in the vault because vaulting is very important so you have to reach out to safe people and then you have to keep their not secrets i'm not going to use the word secrets because secrets are bad but keep their information and their struggles keep it in your vault with discretion don't tell people that and i try to teach my children about discretion discretion is you don't have to tell everybody everything about yourself or about other people and when people tell you sensitive issues or material you keep them in the vault you be trustworthy with that information so you need to vault and hold your the people who are special in your life hold their stuff in your vault and then find people who can hold your stuff in their vault and those are your safe people those are going to be the more emotionally mature people who can help you on this journey if you don't have those people in your family and in your friends and i know for a long time i didn't have those people so i had to pay people to help me to be able to figure that out because i didn't have safe safe people in my life you can pay people to do that. I'm here for you and you can find yourself a therapist or a coach or a program that is gonna vault it for you. But it's very important because you can't keep it secret. You don't wanna keep it in because it keeps the shame cycle going. You have to get it out and have somebody support you. Integrity, we always talk about integrity and dignity in these videos. They're the opposite of guilt and shame. So when you say you're gonna do something, you do it. When you say you're gonna be honest, even though it's hard, you do it. You stay in integrity. You do the things that you say you want for yourself. That goes back to the moral incongruence. So many people say, I'm a Christian. And then they'll engage in a pornography habit that is watching the objectification of other people, treating people as bodies and body parts. That's not in congruency with their Christian beliefs. That creates shame. That's out of integrity. You got to get in integrity and stay there and have somebody help you by keeping it in their vault, keeping you accountable, you being reliable, setting those boundaries. The next one is non-judgment. Don't judge yourself and don't judge others. And most importantly, don't think people are going to judge you without knowing if they are going to do that or not. I've been a university professor for a really long time over 25 years, believe it or not, it's mind blowing to me. And I've worked with so many students that think I'm judging them. That's what prejudice is. It's prejudging somebody. And I wasn't judging the students. I was reaching out to them to give them the support that they needed because I could see that they needed the support, but I didn't know why. And one example was a young woman who had to work in a bar really late every night selling selling cigarettes honestly uh, which i use cigarette analogies in some of these videos but then she was toast in the morning she was very tired and it was an eight o'clock class and she would hardly ever make it i reached out to her i'm like please come see me and she's like i know you think i don't care about this class i'm like that's not what i think at all i think you don't show up so you have an issue and i'm here to help you figure that issue out and she had to work because she was paying her own tuition and so we made a plan for me to be able to support her. And she started showing up more for class because she knew I cared about her, which I did. And But she was judging me for judging her, even though I wasn't. So let's keep judgment out of the mix. 
Don't judge yourself too harshly. Don't get down on yourself. It creates more shame. Don't judge your partner for what she or he can or cannot handle. They might surprise you. And especially if you want to stay, uh, you know, if you want to break this habit and you want to stay in that relationship, you need to give them the opportunity to support you. And yeah, it might be ugly and it might be messy for a while, but you can handle it. You're strong and it's going to rupture and repair. It's going to make your relationship better in the end. But you have to give them that opportunity without judging their capacity. The last one is generosity and being generous with yourself and with others. And I like to think of that as grace. And I use that term a lot. Have grace with yourself. Have grace with other people. So have grace with yourself if you slip. You don't make it a relapse. If you slip, learn from it. But don't beat yourself up because you need to extend grace to yourself. If you tell your partner and she has a total conniption and a massive meltdown and she throws things at you, then have grace for that time and try to help her see that this is a brain issue that you're overcoming and that you want to overcome it with her, that you and her against the compulsion or the addiction, not the compulsion and addiction against her, but have grace because it might be tough for her in those first moments. Okay, that is braving and that is how you can use it to conquer a pornography habit and to rebuild your relationship so that you can move forward in a healthy, intimate relationship and create healthy sexuality and ride off into the sunset. And I wanna be here for you to support you, so go to my website at drtrishley.com, check out my programs so that I can support you so you can do both of those things successfully with the greatest amount of ease, with the least amount of pain, and so that you can reach your full potential and become the best version of yourself that you want to become and that you deserve to become. Okay, and remember, control your brain or it'll control you.